So to lock and unlock the deadbolt, you put the key in, turn the key to the right, back to center, and then pull on the door. That makes sure that it's locked. Okay. To unlock it, put the key in, turn it to the left, back to center, unlocks it. Okay. Right here, you're gonna have the entry door screen. Just pull down on that, push it, and then shut this so that way it keeps all the bugs out. Push down on that, opens it back up. Every time the door shuts, the steps are gonna go up, and every time you open up the door, it's gonna come back out. So whenever you open up the door, you wanna make sure that you just wait a second or two, let the steps open up. So this entry door right here, what this latch right here does when you turn it is unlock and lock the deadbolt. That way no one can get in while you're sleeping. So if these two dots are lined, it's unlocked. That's locked. To open the door, you want to make sure that it's unlocked. Lift this latch open and then push out on the door. That's how you're gonna, that's how you're actually gonna open the door. Okay? If you have this locked like that, it won't allow you to open the door. So you want to make sure it's unlocked and then open the door. Feel good about that? Yes. Power step right here. Uh -huh. When it's flipped up, the steps will come in and out when the door opens and shuts. Uh -huh. When the switch is pressed down, it then disables the step from coming open and closed. Sometimes those awnings get a little stuck. You just got to pull on the arms once in a while. When you let off the switch, the awning will stop moving. So you just continue holding it to bring it out as far as you'd like. And right there is all the way open. Exterior lights to switch is the awning light. Yep, right there. You're going to have another awning switch, which is going to bring out the main awning. And again, with that one, when you let off, it stops. So you just continue holding down on the switch to bring it out as far as you'd like. And that's also controlled off of the switch. The exterior lights too, controls both awning lights. There we go. Right here, you're gonna have a switch that says main power, right there, and it's gonna be illuminated. So when it's illuminated, it means that it's hooked up. So that way, the batteries are being used. When you wanna disconnect, hit the switch and the light goes out. When the light goes out, it disconnects power from the entire coach. Right out here is going to be your furnace. So the exhaust is going to come out here, so you don't want to touch it when it's running. It's going to be really hot. That works off your propane tank, so you got to have the propane tank on for it to work. Right back here is going to be your propane tank. This is going to be your on and off valve right here. So this is how you're going to turn the fuel on and off for the coach for cooking on the stove running the refrigerator off of propane, water heater off of propane. So you want to make sure that this is turned all the way to the left, which is all the way on. Then when you turn it all the way to the right, it turns it off. Right here is going to be the outside entertainment center. So you're going to have a radio right here. And then this is going to be your TV. Right here, the power. always takes a moment for them to turn on. So when you hit the power button, don't just keep hitting it. You gotta let it kind of warm up for a moment. Then you can go through your inputs. You can go back over to TV. Get your regular outside TV. How'd it do that? Through input, you hit input on the actual remote right there. 
when you hit input, a screen pops up right here, says input source. You have TV, HDMI 1, 2, audio, video, and USB. USB is used just for photos, so you can put like a little flash drive stick in the back of the TV and use it for that. If you flip it over to HDMI 1 or 2, the DVD player inside the coach will also play the movies outside. Oh, well, okay. Yep, Obviously. exactly. So that's what that's used for. You just hit input, and then you just cycle through on if you want it on TV, HDMI 1 and 2, and that's what you select. So if you go through on TV, you have menu, hit the menu button, and then picture pops up, and then you can scroll through over to where it says channels. And then you can scroll down to where it says auto channel search. When you do auto channel search, you would hit enter. And then you can select if you have a satellite box, cable from the wall, or antenna. So if you select antenna, it's going to search using the antenna for all the local feed stations. Fox 5, channel 33, whatever's in that area. So when you do that, it's going to pick up right now we're in Vegas, so it's going to pick up all the local Vegas channels. And then, say you take it up to Utah, you'd want to do an auto channel search again, so you can pick up all the Utah channels if you're in Utah. Does that make sense? Because yep. it's still set for Vegas, and if the range isn't that far, because you're outside of Vegas, so it won't pick anything up until you run an actual channel search. There we go. Feel pretty good about that? Yeah. Right on. Right here we got Another storage compartment, and that right there is going to be your low point drain. So your low point drain, you'll open, you'll just turn that valve, and what that's going to do is that's going to drain all the water out of the system. So you got water going up to your faucets, your showers, your toilets, and everything, and that's what you're going to use to drain everything out. Right here is going to be your water heater. When do you drain that stuff? Uh, you drain it out. If you're going to let it sit for like several months, anything over three months, I would turn that valve and let it drain out so you don't get stagnant water. Um, and say you want to replace the kitchen faucet or something, you don't want to crack the lines loose, have water leaking everywhere, so you just open that up, drain all the water out. That way when you change out a faucet, you don't have water everywhere. And then right here is going to be your water heater. This just comes up, and then this right here is just the actual on-off switch right here. So. All the way up, power on is on. In the center is off. And then when you press it down, that's their what they call their eco on. So it's supposed to be more water friendly. It only works when you got water running through the faucet. So what you do is you turn it to on all the way up at the top. And then when you turn a faucet on, it's automatically gonna kick on and start heating the water. So I don't put it in eco mode because eco mode, it doesn't uh, work as well. Um, when it's on the regular mode on, it heats up really quick and it's really nice so you can take a nice hot shower. You notice when you turn it to eco on all the way down at the bottom, you'll kind of be fidgeting with the hot and the cold more trying to get it to where you want. So it's just easier just to turn it all the way to on and make sure your propane tank is turned on. So right here is going to be a pressure relief valve. So what that's going to do is if the water heater heats too much temperature or pressure, that has a little spring inside there that's going to pop and release the pressure out. So if you see a little bit of water dripping out of there, that's okay. It's not bad. But if you see water going for like two or three minutes constantly, then that means that this valve got stuck. And then what you want to do is just play with that valve right there. So, cool. Right over here we got your power cord. So this is what you're going to pull out. You would feed it in through this little hatch right here. That way you can then close this door. So just feed in right down through there. Take the power cord and you just run it right over to where your power is. The box happens to be right over here. You would plug it in and make sure this breaker is turned on. So when the breaker is up, it's on, and when the breaker's down, like that, breaker's off. So this is going to be for a 15 amp. This is the 50 amp for the power cord right here, and then you're going to have a 30 amp for a 30 amp outlet. What happens so, if you're at a campground that only has a 30 amp? If it only has a 30 amp like this one here, 
we use a power adapter that would plug into this cord and then it would plug right into here. Okay. So when you got me in the Yeah, I still gotta find it. So yep, right there. And then the 15 amp would be for here. So 50 amp you can run two air conditioners on. A 30 amp, if you have to reduce down, then you only get one roof air. And then if you got a 15, if you're reduced down to a 15, then you can run everything except air conditioners. Yes. Right back here, you're gonna have your sewer connections right there. So you're gonna hook up your sewer hose right there. And then you got a black holding tank and a gray holding tank. And also on the valves, you'll notice that the valve handle has a gray handle and a black handle. So the black tank is gonna be everything that goes down the toilets. And then the gray tank is gonna be everything that goes down sinks and showers. So what I do is I hook up the hose and then just pull the valve handle, let everything drain out, shut that, and then open up the gray handle, let all the soapy water from taking showers, doing dishes, rinse out your sewer hose. Okay. So you do black tank first, then gray tank? Yes, exactly. <clears throat> so right back here is going to be where you're going to hook up your city water hose. So right there where it says city water, you'll hook up your hose and then it pops up through a hatch right here in the floor. See that right there? So it'll come up through here, hook right into here, and then you got all these different colored valves you'll turn. So you got what they call dry camping. Dry camping's for out in the middle of nowhere next to a cactus, basically. You got city water. City water's like when you're in the city, hook up to the side of a friend's house or something like that, you got their garden hose coming in. Winterize is gonna be so that way you can hook up a hose here and suck antifreeze up into the coach for cold weather. Sanitize is going to be where you would hook up a hose here and then you can suck uh, Clorox up into the system to sanitize and clean all the water lines. And then you got power fill. So what power fill is going to do is you would run a garden hose from your house right here and then you can fill your fresh tank that's on board. You want to fill that fresh tank before you go out dry camping in the middle of nowhere because there's no uh, spigots out in the middle of the desert. How many gallons is this one? Uh, I'd have to look it up. Each one of these is different. I want to say it's like, like 80. Uh, that might be the weight of the water. Yeah, because uh, either it's like 80 or 90 gallons at 8.3 pounds per gallon. So okay. that's a lot of water. Um, so dry camping, you would turn the white valve down, blue valve to the side, and then turn both the red and green up. So right now the coach is set up for dry camping. When you turn your water pump on, it's gonna suck from the tank up to all your fixtures. If you are gonna be city camping, you'll hook your hose up, white valve down, blue across, red up, and then green to the left. So now this is now set up for a water hose to be hooked up to it. If you're gonna winterize the coach, you're gonna siphon uh, antifreeze using your water pump up to all your fixtures turn the valves towards each other and then these ones away like that and then now you would hook up a hose turn your water pump on and suck the antifreeze into your coach. I need to get a water filter from the garden hose up into this thing? Uh, you, you actually have a water filter right here that's what this canister is so that's your water filter and then this right here would be how you would actually remove the water filter put this on right there Turn it to the left to loosen it, and to the right to tighten it. So what you'll do is once a year, you'll take that filter out and then you'll replace it. Like you would at a house if you have one in your refrigerator or something like that. So you have a macerator, that's this right here. So what a macerator does is it's a pump and it chews up all the waste and then it pushes it out through like a garden hose. Used a lot on boats. So if you ever have gone boating and stuff like that and they have the toilets on the boats, there's no gravity drain for that. They have to use what they call a macerator. So it's like a water pump, but it, it sucks up all the waste from the black tank, chews it up and then spits it out through a small hose. So that's what this is right here. So you see this valve right here? You would hook up your hose right there, pull this valve open, and then you would 
flip the macerator switch. What that's going to do is instead of draining out the black tank using gravity, it's going to pump all the waste out. Okay. Does that make sense? So instead of doing it the other way, do it this way. Yeah, you could do it either way. And what that's kind of used for too, say like you're parked away and you can't, your, your drain is like way over there, like 15, 20 feet over there. You could hook up a hose and then you can pump it out that way or pump it uphill into a drain. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Yep, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> so the it's just, other one only works if it's just going down. Yeah, downhill. Okay. If you got to pump it uphill, then that's what you use the macerator for. You'd hook up your hose right there, pull the valve open, and then, uh, then hit the macerator, and then you'll hear the pump start spinning, and it'll start chewing everything up, all the waste, all the paper, chemicals, all the water and everything, and start pumping it out. The blue hose is actually your outside shower. So you got hot and cold. And then you can use that for whatever you want. If you're at the beach and you want to rinse off all the salt water, if you want to set up a, like a little table, if you're cleaning fish from going fishing, whatever you want to use it for. Some people use it for if they have like a quad or something, they want to get all the dust off of it before they go riding again. Whatever you can think to use it for. Then right here, this is going to be just a, a light switch for up here. And then this is going to be your pump. So you got a water pump switch on the outside and then another water pump switch on the inside. What that's for, so that way you don't have to walk around inside the coach and flip a switch and then come back out. You can just flip it right here if you wanted. What's the black one? Uh, this one right here is going to be your sanding flush. So you just hook up your uh, hose right here and it's going to flush out that black tank. That's actually important because when you drain that black tank either using the gravity feed or the macerator to pump it out, you don't want any leftover paper or waste or anything to smell. So what you do is you hook up your hose, turn it on, it's going to pump out, you know, flush out that tank. You keep that valve open while you're doing that? If you're using the macerator, yes. If you're using the gravity feed, then no. Depends which way you're, which way you're pumping it out or draining it out. So, and you just let that go until you see it nice and clear water going through, then you know it's, you know, clean. Uh, I let it go for about five minutes or so. You'll see it clean, clear water going, and then you'll see like a like a gob of toilet paper just float past, you know, and then you'll see clean, clear water, and then you'll see like another gob of toilet paper pass. So you just let it go for about five minutes or so. That way it sprays down the walls, all the sensors. If paper gets stuck on the sensor, it'll set it off saying that the tank is two-thirds full when it's not. So okay. you just want to let it run for a few minutes and... You can never over flush it, you can always under flush it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right here is going to be the actual gas cap for the, the main fuel tank. So you just fill it up, use 87, you don't have to use no 91 or anything like that. Fuel's expensive and they're large tanks. So they're actually designed to run off of 87. Right down here is going to be the hose they supply you with. And it has different notches so that way you can screw it into a hole in the ground. If it has larger or smaller threads, you can also hook up a garden hose right here and run a garden hose out somewhere and pump it out. Oh, cool. Yep, so that's what that's, that's part of the macerator. So, okay. yep. Only that's only for the macerator, not for... Yes, exactly. The other side? Yep, exactly, because it has this smaller hose and everything, okay. so that way it can grind it up and put it through this hose. But if you use the other one, you need to use... Yep, use the uh, the, gravity, the gravity gravity drain. drain. Yep, exactly. Exactly, yep. So, that's what that's for. Right here is going to be your generator. So, this is going to be the exhaust pipe for the generator. And then this is going to be your actual generator. So, pop the cover off. Then you got your breakers right here. So, those breakers say that it's on. So when the generator runs, it's going to supply power to the coach. If one trips and it says off, then the generator will still run, but it will not supply power to the coach. So if the generator is running and the complaint is that not, the air conditioner is not working, the TV's not working, they're out in the middle of nowhere, they want to pull this cover off and check to make sure that the breakers are actually in the on position and not the off. You have a switch right here that you can start and stop. And then you have a couple switches inside where you can do it from the driver's chair or by the monitor panel. So you got three switches, depending where you're at, if you're outside or inside the coach, you can start and stop the gen. What you do is you just hold 
the uh, prime button or the stop button down for about 15 seconds or so, the light will come on and it's actually priming the carburetor. So I let that go for about 10, 15 seconds. Then you hold the start. The generator starts up and runs. So sometimes it won't start the first time. It is carbureted and that's the carburetor right there. So uh, if that happens, just hold the stop or the prime button down again, let it prime for a few seconds, and then hold the start, let it start. Sometimes you have to do it two or three times, depending on if it's real cold outside, if it hasn't been started a lot. So it varies. Right here is going to be the dipstick. I always recommend pulling the dipstick out and checking the oil level before you fire off the generator. And when you pull it out, there's the oil on the dipstick and then it raises up when you pull the dipstick off. So when you first pull it out, it's not going to be accurate. You got to open it and then check it again and then now you see the oil is higher on the dipstick. Right here we got lights. This is going to be your thermostat for the front furnace and the front air conditioner. So you got up and down arrows, that's your temperature. What you want if you want to set the you know, 70, 71, 72. This one down here is what will cycle through. So it goes cold low, cold auto, cold high auto, heat. You have electric heat pumps. So the air conditioner turns into a heater, use the electricity to actually heat the coach. Or if you have it set to heat gas, it'll then kick in the furnace and use the furnace to heat the coach. So. Then it goes off, and then back to fan low, fan high, and then back to cool. So you just hit this bottom button here and keep cycling through to what you want. If you want cool high, cool low, you know, heat using electric or heat using gas. So right here is going to be your monitor panel. So this is you're going to use this quite a bit. LPG is your low pressure gas. That's your propane tank on the outside of the coach. Right now it's showing that it's all the way full. Battery is going to be your battery outside, letting you know how fully charged that is. When you're plugged into power, it's going to go all the way over to full. And then when you unplug and you're dry camping out in the middle of nowhere, it's going to go down as you use more lights. It's going to slowly drain the battery, like leaving the lights on on a vehicle. So what you'll do to charge them back up is either the solar panel is going to see the sun and it's going to charge them back. If you don't have any sun, you'd want to fire off the generator and use that to power everything and charge back your batteries. Fresh tank is only up to two thirds full because it's only two thirds full. That's what you're going to draw off of when you're out dry camping out in the middle of nowhere. Then black is for your toilets and gray is sinks and showers. Those are both empty. So as you use the toilet, take showers and do dishes, your gray tanks and black tanks are going to start filling up. Right here is going to be your uh, auto gen start feature. That's what this right here is for. What that does is uh, when the batteries get low you can turn it on enable the light comes on green so what happens is when the batteries get low the generator is going to automatically start and run to charge back those batteries so you won't have a dead battery that's nice to use when you're out uh, dry camping because if you're out in the middle of nowhere you want to enable it that way if the batteries get low it'll start the generator before they become dead if the batteries are dead it won't have enough power to start the generator so and then to shut that off, you just hit this reset and it turns off the auto gen start feature. Right here, you got a start and stop. That's gonna be for your generator like we have on the outside. You hold down the stop and then it primes that carburetor. Hit the start and then it fires off the gen. When a generator comes on, you have an hour meter right here and what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you know how many, generator, how many hours are on the generator. Right now it's at 51 hours. As the generator runs longer, it counts that time. So, another important thing to what, know. What you run the generator? Just when you're dry camping? Yeah, when you're out dry camping. Uh, what I do is when I'm driving down the road out here in Vegas, it's real hot. So I'll run the generator while I'm driving down the road so I can run my roof airs. And what that'll do is I'll help cool the coach because the dash air just won't cut it. Because the dash air is trying to cool this whole coach. Can you start it while you're driving yeah there's a switch right up on the dash generator start and stop oh, okay so that way if you're sitting in the seat you can hold down as long as these are turned on you can start the generator while you're driving yep 
and then that way you're running the rooftop airs it's going to maintain a comfortable temperature inside the coach you know unless you're in california or somewhere it's just it's hard to keep it cool that being said you got these slide room switches right here slide room one and slide room two you got extend and retract so right now this is with the coach closed up you want to hit extend and what that's doing is it's extending the slide room now whenever you let off it stops so you want to make sure that you hit extend and hold it till it opens all the way once it opens all the way it stops that's slide room two slide room one is the main slide room right here so that's slide room one and again when you let off it stops so if you say like there's a tree branch or something outside uh, and someone says stop you can just let off and it'll stop if it's clear you just continue holding this uh, button down and it's going to bring it all the way out once it came all the way out it stopped so that's what the slide room one and two is for slide room three you hit extend slide room three is this main slide room right here this is a different slide room it has kind of like a howling whining sound to it that's the motors running to bring the slide room out so with this type of slide room what you want to do is continue holding your finger down until it comes all the way out once it goes all the way out you continue holding your finger down on the button for like two to five seconds what that's going to do is let the slide room know that it's all the way out the bedroom slide so when you hit slide room four extend that's going to start going out that's for the bedroom and same thing you just hold your finger down till it's all the way out and you do that for all the slide rooms. There you go. So then what you got right down here is tank heaters. And when you turn it on, the switch lights up. So what tank heaters does is if you're in cold country where it's like below 30 degrees and you're out camping out there, you turn tank heaters on and it has a heating pad on the bottom of the tank that's gonna heat the tanks up so that way they won't freeze. Water heater right here, that's gonna, that has to be on along with the switch outside on the actual water heater itself. So when you turn that on, when you turn the water on, it's going to be nice and hot for you for taking showers, doing dishes. Water pump, you'll turn that on if you're out dry camping. So if you're out dry camping in the middle of nowhere or you stop on the side of the road, you turn your uh, water pump on. That way you can you know, use the toilet or do dishes or whatever you have to use it for if you're out dry camping. Or but if you're just at an RV park? You don't need to turn the pump on? Correct, yeah, the pump does not need to be on if you're at an RV park where you have the water hose hooked up to the coach. The water pump is only for if you're out in the middle of nowhere, camping out what they call dry camping, or say like you're out pulling to a rest stop and you need to use the toilet, you gotta turn the water pump on so that way you can flush the actual toilet. Oh, uh, gotcha, okay. Yep, exactly. You have an inverter right here. And what you do is you hold it down for a split second and then let go, that turns on the inverter. So you have an inverter built into the coach. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take your batteries outside and jump up the voltage so that way you can watch TV at night without running a generator if you're dry camping. When you're out dry camping, say if you're dry camping in a national park, they have what they call quiet hours. Quiet hours after 10 o'clock, generators can't run. So what people will do is if they're out in the middle, in a national park where there's no hookups, they run their generator, and then once it hits quiet hour, they'll come in here, turn their inverter on, and that way they can kick back, watch a movie, watch TV, cook a bag of popcorn or something in a microwave, and then in the morning they will turn on their generator, charge back the batteries from what they use during the night. So the inverters to take the battery power and jump up the voltage so you can watch TVs and stuff. So to shut that off, you just push the button down, hold it, and then let go, and that's how it shuts off. You got your stove right here. This is gonna be propane only. So you just lift this up like that. And then there's gonna be your stove. So it's propane, and then you got your left burner, your center burner, and your right burner. So you just turn it on and then you just keep sparking till you get the stove to light. So, and that works for all of them. Sometimes it'll do that and you just gotta keep going if the propane. If you don't turn it on a lot, sometimes it takes a moment for it to get the gas up to the stove. So, we'll turn all of them on. 
There we go. There we go. So just because you turn it on, if it goes right out like that, it's just pushing all the air out of the line. So sometimes it takes 30 seconds to a minute to get those light. So what you want to do is turn them on, let them burn for a good two minutes. That You'll see the flame kind of move around. What that's doing is getting all the air out of lines. Now when you turn the refrigerator on on propane, it's going to light the first time. Water heater is going to light. So that's how that works. Right here you got your bed. So to use this, you got to unlatch the seat belt. Make sure that's unhooked. Then what you're going to do is turn this key to on and then you compress the down arrow and then this will come down. When you let off, it stops. Just like that. So then what I do is I like to get this bed a little lower. So what I do is I raise it up because you can have it set to any height. And I'll take these chairs and I'll bring them back like that. Just like that. Now that you got these chairs back, you could actually go down and lower this all the way and these won't hit right up in here. That way you can get that last extra two inches. And where's the so. ladder in the guide ring? Uh, check right up here. So that's going to be this. What this is for is so that way you can actually put this in right here. So that way uh, no one can roll off. And then this right here is going to be the actual ladder. That just hooks right over the rail right here. Right here, this is going to be the rooftop antenna. So when we turn the outside TV on and we turn it to TV and we got the local air feed channel, that's working off of this antenna right here. Here's a little button you can press in and you can twist it left and right. What that's going to do is it's going to adjust the antenna signal. You might get a better or worse signal depending which way you turn it. Right here is going to be your actual kitchen dinette and then you got all the seat belts there so that way you can strap yourself in for travel. So you got this little lever right here that you can twist left and right underneath the actual table itself. And what that's doing is that either locks the table or unlocks the table. What that's for, so that way when you press down on the actual table, you can push this down and turn it into a bed. So what you do is you move these cushions out of the way and push it all the way down and then lock it and then move the cushions over. What you would do is you would pull the table up, flip this lever back over, and now it's locked so that way it won't go down. It's up there. You also have a TV lift right here. So that's how you control this TV. You can run it down or up. I suggest having it down for traveling. Travel. Yeah, it kind of makes it a little more secure. That way it's not kind of wobbling around as much. So have it all the way down for when you travel. Just like that. And then bring it up when you're ready to use it. Right up here, this is going to be your Blu-ray player. That's where you can put your uh, movies in and then you can watch it outside or inside depending on if the TV is on HDMI 1 or HDMI 2. So, and then this is just a big old switch box. What that controls is your main TV, your bedroom TV, your outside. And then you can have them set on if you want like DVD, Satellite 1, AUX. Right on. So this right here is going to be how you're going to raise and lower the actual top bunk. You would turn the key to on and hit raise. And what that's going to do is it's going to raise that bed up. If you want to lower it down, you would just hit lower and it would lower down. Leave down on the actual bed itself. You do have a little bit of storage underneath. And then along with that, right down here, it's going to be kind of hard to tell. <clears throat> That's going to be all your fuses and breakers for the entire side of the coach. That's very important to know because if your air conditioner isn't working, it might have tripped a breaker, like at a house. You just reset it. Over here on this side, you got all fuses. That's going to be for your 12 volt side. That's going to be for lights inside, your bed lifts, radios, things like that.
If those blow, you just pull it out and replace it with a new one. Cool. Right back here, you're going to have a monitor panel. That's going to be for your black and gray tank as well. So being that you have a toilet back here, you're going to have a black tank toilet. And then you're going to have another toilet up there, so you have two actual black tanks. And then uh, your gray. So gray is for sinks and showers. Black is for the toilet back here. Then you're going to have uh, your combo washer dryer. So how this is going to operate is you turn this on, lights up and comes on. This right here is going to be where you're going to put all your soaps and everything. And then you're going to use these numbers depending on what you want. If you want it a super wash, you turn it to one. So then this would go over to one. If you wanted uh, delicates, that would be eight. You would then turn this to eight. And when you're ready, you can set your temperature if you want it on hot or cold, a little bit of both. And then you can set your dryer time, 20 minutes, all the way up to max load, or 120 minutes. You have to use a certain kind of laundry soap? Or uh, they recommend using that, what they call like the HE, the high efficiency. be the actual main bath for the coach. You got your toilet, and the toilet's an actual push pedal toilet. So you just put your foot down on the pedal, and you would actually just flush the toilet like that, and then let go. This, you want to have this latch down in the locked position, that way the door won't open. When you're ready to use it, you lift it up, that way you can open and close the doors. You want this locked for when you're traveling down the road like the rear bathroom, that way these glass doors aren't slamming shut. So, so right up here, this is going to be the main cockpit area, so this is where you're going to be driving it, leveling it, you're going to use your... Uh, the light switch right here is going to be for like a map light type of deal right up above our heads here and then you got your generator start and stop this is so that way while you're driving down the road you can start your generator and run your rooftop airs while you're going down the road the actual uh, air up on the dash is not enough to cool the whole coach in the summertime so that's why they put this switch up here then you got your actual AC controls right here for the actual dash air your fan the little snowflake is going to be for actually kicking in the compressor and then that's the recirculation to recirculate the air inside the coach. Um, right here is going to be your actual radio so then you can control the volume knobs. And then also notice you have all rear or front. What that controls is you can control the volume level in different areas. So you, when you hit the plus or minus it will pop up. You can turn the rear up more or you can go and turn all and go all of them down all of them up front up or rear so that way if you have people in different areas you can have music a little bit louder or a little bit softer in different areas of the coach this is also what's going to light up too when you go through and you turn the key on put the coach in reverse what's going to happen is uh, it will light up and it's in rear. So that way you can see what's going on behind you. Can you cycle to the cameras in these gears? Yeah, so when you're driving down the road, you can hit like the left turn and then it'll automatically go to the left camera. Okay. When you hit right turn, it then goes to the right side camera. Right now it's not showing down the side of the coach because you got the slide room open, so it's showing you what it sees, but whichever camera you turn on is gonna be the one off of the turn signals. Left is left, right's right, and when you put it in reverse it's going to back up right to reverse. So then right here you can have it hooked up to your phone, you can hit view map, and it'll pull up right where you're at. So that would kind of helps if you're going around different areas you're not used to. Right down here is going to be a USB. That's where you would actually plug your phone into the actual radio itself is what that's going to be used for. Then uh, go ahead and start the motor home motorhome comes up and then you have all these knobs on the steering wheel on and off is for your cruise control that's how you turn your cruise control on and off you have your horn horn and then you have resume set accelerate or coast that's going to be for your cruise control features right there you want to use coast for if you're going down a hill and you got another hill going right back up you would hit coast so you pick up speed so that way the motorhome's not trying to struggle as it goes up the other side of the hill so 
the uh, tow haul. Tow haul is used for if you're towing a trailer, you can hit tow haul and then it's gonna drop overdrive and so that way the transmission won't overheat. I also use tow haul when I'm going down, say like an off ramp to a freeway. Uh, you'd hit tow haul and then it would also use the engine to help slow you down while you're coming off the freeway. Uh, parking brakes right down there. That's how you set and release the parking brake. Brake pedal and then gas pedals also down there. So what you got right here is going to be for your trip. So you'd hit info. Info gives you like right now it's 100 degrees outside, 426 miles to empty engine hours. It'll let you know how long the engine's been running. So that'll tell you based on mileage. Uh, if you have zero, like not a lot of miles, but the engine hours are high, it means the engine's been idling for long periods of time. If the mileage is high and the hours are low, that means it's been being driven for long periods of time. So you can kind of tell if the engine's been idling or if it's been going down the road. You hit info again, goes back, gives you your trip. Your trip lets you know how many miles that you've driven it since it was filled up and then back to temperature. That's what that's for. Windshield washers right here. You would push this in and then the windshield wipers would uh, spray and then you got your speed by twisting this knob of how fast you want them to wipe back and forth. Right over here is going to be your controls for your headlights. That's off, that's on. And then fog lights is going to be fog lights down below. You also have a 12 volt outlet right here which is going to be good for uh, you know charging your phone or anything that you might need power for. Shade up and down is what you're going to use to extend and retract the shade. The sh when the engine's running the shade will only go down so far. When you turn the engine off the shade will then go farther. So they do that on purpose so that way while you're driving you can't lower the shade down all the way. Battery boost, what that's going to do is that's going to, if you have a dead battery, you would hit battery boost and it would jump the batteries in the back to the engine battery so that way you can get the coach started. And then heated mirror just heats the mirrors. Then you got left and right for your controls on adjusting them. To work the, the leveling system on the coach, the engine has to be running. So you got to have the engine running for this to work. What you would do is you would turn it on. Right there, and then it, it kicks on. You have all these right here, which is going to light up. Wait just lets you know that the control board is thinking on what it's trying to do. Jacks down when that's illuminated, let, letting you know that the jacks are down. Low voltage means the batteries are low. And if the parking brake is not set, it'll light up telling you to engage the parking brake. Excess angle means the coach is too, has too steep of an angle for it to operate. So to level the coach, you turn it on and then hit auto. When you hit auto, the light will light up and then the coach is going to automatically level itself. So you just let it wait and then when you do that you don't want people walking around inside the coach because that will set it off and it won't level correctly. It is hydraulic so it will be abrupt on leveling the coach. Yep, real abrupt. So what it's doing is it's letting you know what side now it's going to start doing the rear and then once it's all level, the LCI should light up. So, this can take a couple minutes. See, now the LCI is actually leveling. It's still going through doing its thing, but there we go. So, that's level. It makes popping sounds and everything because the slide rooms were out. Okay. So you can level the slide, level it with the slide rooms out or the slide rooms in, but don't uh, it, when it's leveling, it's going to be tweaking on the frame and stuff like that. And you got wood cabinets and stuff, so things are going to be creaking and popping. Okay. That's okay. So it's better to do it one way or the other. Or it... uh, I like to do it when the rooms are in, because that way everything's all in and levels it, and then the rooms go out. If you have it while the rooms are out, you kind of get a little bit more popping because the rooms are pushing out on the walls and the walls are flexing when you're leveling. So that's how you get more popping sounds when the rooms are out. So, and then right now saying all jacks are down and the coach is level. Okay. So now if you go to take off and you forget to put the jacks up, what will happen is the moment you pull it out of park, the coach is just gonna drop because it doesn't want to bend the jack. 
So if you forget to bring the jacks up, the moment you pull it out of park, the jacks are automatically going to retract by themselves. So if you want to retract the jacks, what you would do is you would start the motor home, turn this on, and then you would hit retract all jacks. When you do that, it's going to drop. Just like that. Now the coach is lowering down onto the wheels so that way you can actually travel. Then what you have right here is manual mode. What manual mode is for is you'd hold manual down till it would light up and you got left and right, front and rear. So what that's going to do is that way you can control which jacks you want to run to level the coach. So if you get an excess slope and it won't auto level, you can put it in manual mode and level it to the best that of your abilities in that area. So there's no actual level thing to see. Uh it will it tells you off of here you got these arrows that will light up and that'll tell you what needs to be extended. So if you get the rear right there lighting up, that means the rear needs to be extended. If you get the right side arrow lighting up, that means the right side of the coach needs to be extended. Does that make sense? Once the coach is level, LCI right there will start flashing or say stay solid green. So